Hello, I'm Jocelyn Turner and welcome to this week's edition of Community College News. Today, we will look at how social media is helping to find missing people and some helpful winter driving tips. In our first story, social media is more than just a way to keep in contact with your friends. Police and concerned family members have taken to social media to help find missing persons. Kyle DuPont reports. Amber Kerwan is missing. The 19-year-old from New Glasgow, Nova Scotia went missing early Sunday. People are using social media to spread the news about her disappearance. The RCMP are using social media in cases similar to this. What we'll, we will do uh, is put, the, uh, put a news release together on the RCMP New Brunswick website, and then we'll use uh, Facebook and Twitter, and we'll use those to link, uh, to link back to that information so that we're able to, uh, through those pages, share it with a, a great number of people. It's a, it's a very valuable tool because you can reach a number of people quickly and often faster than you can using mainstream media. Social media continues to grow. People are using it as an alternative in finding missing loved ones. Crystal Gould said she used Facebook to help search for Sabrina Patterson last year. They put an RCMP website up and everybody posted pictures, put it in her profiles, and that she was missing and who to contact. Six Facebook pages have already been set up to help find Amber. One already has about 2,500 members. Green says that the pros do outweigh the cons when using social media to gain the public's help in these types of situations. In Woodstock, Kyle DuPont, Community College News. The NBCC Board of Governors elections results are in. A second year mechanical engineering technology student, Edward Jenkins of St. John, is the second student to be voted in. The St. John campus held an open house last week. Almost 800 students visited the campus to experience a day of college classes, explore the programs, and meet the instructors. The St. Andrews campus held a Know Your Blood Type clinic, sponsored by the Canadian Blood Services. The Green Campus Initiative at NBCC Woodstock has been shut down. The committee was created two years ago to explore ways for the campus to become environmentally friendly. Jillian Trainer explains that the group's ideas could be implemented at other campus sites. The Green Campus Initiative was only supposed to last one year. However, Principal Tim Marshall was able to get the program extended to two. The campus implemented several strategies to make the school a greener workplace. Our approach was to, to try some different things here in, in Woodstock, and, and which we have, and we have shared that information and those successes that we've had with the other campuses. Marshall says the Green Committee thought of a way to reduce waste going into a landfill. For example, we banned the sale of bottled water here in Woodstock, uh, which we believe is, is a good thing for the environment. Students can instead fill water bottles at any fountain in the school. Student Council gave everyone a reusable water bottle. Other achievements of the committee include switching light bulbs in the school to energy efficient ones. Parking spaces were set aside solely for the use of carpooling students. Woodstock Mayor Art Slip says the carpooling spots are a good idea and he hopes they stay. When the college came forward with the carpooling program, we thought that was a wonderful, wonderful initiative and we were very, very pleased to work with them to provide some support for, this, uh, spaces, for these spaces that you have here. NBCC President and CEO Marilyn Luscombe says that the Green Campus Initiative is not disbanded, merely on a hiatus. In Woodstock, Jillian Trainer, Community College News. Winter is coming. Roads will soon be treacherous for New Brunswickers. Our Mike Trusiak examines how drivers can keep themselves safe during those winter months. Winter, an unavoidable part of life in New Brunswick. Many drivers take precautions to protect themselves and their vehicles from dangerous winter driving conditions. Uh, I get winter tires put on it, I get it serviced at the garage. What else do I have to do? Not much else. Winter tires and that one I actually put up for the winter. I, t I get out something else to drive around in. I just put it in the garage. I leave for Ford in November so I don't have to worry about it. I'm back again and race right she goes. Garages sell hundreds of winter tires. This one's selling over 1,200 last winter alone. But owner Jeff Wright often warns consumers all season tires are not enough. Winter tires by far are, are much safer than all season tires. They have a different rubber compound. They're a softer rubber compound and when it hits freezing, it, they, it maintains its grip on the road better than an all season tire does. Wright thinks the provincial government should make winter tires mandatory as they are in Quebec. 
Um, I know they did a study in the province of Quebec a few years ago, and they looked at all the accidents that occurred, and over 70% of the vehicles that were in accidents had all-season tires on them. Changing your tires is not the only thing you should consider. Garages also recommend changing the oil and checking the antifreeze. In Woodstock, Mike Trusiak, Community College News. Canadian drivers get their licenses when they are teenagers. After a few years, maybe even decades on the road, many drivers can get a little rusty. Tony Bourgeois spoke to drivers that don't think they would do well if they had to take the test over. Some drivers have had their licenses for decades and have not thought of the driver's test since the day they took it. What if they had to take it again? Probably would be in the 80% to 90%. Yep. I'd probably fail. <laughs> More than likely, I can't parallel park. Um, I think I'd do all right, but I'd probably forget something like signaling when you're pulling back out and, you know, the little small things that you don't really think of on a day-to-day -day basis. A University of Calgary study shows nearly 90% of experienced drivers could not pass their Class 7 learner's test. Lynn Gibson is a driving instructor. She agrees many people would not be able to pass the test if they had to take it again. <laughs> they probably wouldn't be able to... I'd say quite a few people wouldn't pass it 20 years after they take their license because of the parallel parking. Gibson believes most experienced drivers would avoid parallel parking and would be out of practice for the test. She also does not believe many would do well on the written portion because things have changed since they took their test. I, I'd say today if someone had their license for 30 years or more, they probably wouldn't be able to pass the permit test today. <clears throat> a lot of new rules, a lot of new signs out here that people don't even know what they are. The new driving rules are available online and at your local motor vehicle branch. Gibson urges people to look up the new rules and signage every so often, but doesn't believe people will take it upon themselves to do so. In Woodstock, Tony Bourgeois, Community College News. Students living far from home have to travel long distances during the winter. Reporter Ethan Hazlitt spoke with a local driving instructor for winter driving safety tips. We're here with Larry Sewell. Uh, he's a driver's ed instructor and he talked to us today about winter driving tips. Hi, thank you for meeting Pleased us. Pleased to meet you. Uh, I was wondering if you have any basic safety driving tips for students during the winter. Uh, the biggest things, I guess, for driving tips is slow. Snow means slow. Uh, anytime that there's a, there's a bit of uh, snow or ice falling out of that sky, speed is the number one factor. Too fast for conditions can cause more problems than anything else. Okay. Now, if someone was on the highway and they were going at higher speeds, is there any safety tips for that? Uh, yeah, they, they have to really be paying attention so much closer anytime speed is increased, of course, the risk of, uh, risk of an accident or collision increases dramatically. Uh, people that just drive at 10 kilometers over the posted speed limit in good conditions increase their chances of having an accident by 42 percent. So when you add snow and ice or slippery conditions to that mix, then I would have to think that the numbers would go up dramatically over top of that. Now, would it be safer to take, say, a back road over the highway, or...? Sometimes, depending on the time of day, biggest thing. Uh, if it happens to be a storm that's happened overnight, uh, sometimes the highway might be better shape. But I usually like to stick to the back road simply because school buses go early in the morning, and they usually get out and sand and salt and plow the roads for the school buses. So sometimes the back roads are better, okay. depending on time. Now, what do you do to prepare your car for the winter? First of all, I take it to the dealership. I have all my vehicles done at uh, the dealership, Corey Ford, and they check it over for me. Uh, then the next step would be winter tires, winter wiper blades, winter uh, windshield washer, things like that. How do you know when to replace your uh, winter tires? There's, uh, there's what's called a tread wear indicator built into all tires. And it's just a little narrow band of rubber that will just show up that, it's, that appears to be smooth all the way across the tread of the tire. That's usually the first indication, unless the uh, mechanic at the, at the dealership says, well, you know, your tires are getting a bit low. They measure the depth with a little gauge. Yeah. Now, for people who are driving larger vehicles, do you think they have a false sense of security? or? Yes. Yes, tremendously. Especially people that drive SUVs, all-wheel drive, four-wheel drive, etc. Four-wheel drive or all-wheel drive really doesn't make a whole lot of difference in slippery conditions. Uh, it gives them the false sense of security that they can drive faster because they have a much larger vehicle or better traction vehicle. And it really, all it does is just makes the tow truck have to reach out farther to get them out of the woods. Now, if someone did go off the road, what would be the first thing they should do? 
Um, one of the first things, of course, is to evaluate their condition. Are they hurt? Uh, do they have any aches or pains? Is there any serious damage to their vehicle that may cause injury? Then the second would be, of course, to try to get help. Uh, get out of their vehicle if they can uh, and kind of survey the situation a little bit. If they have a cell phone, perhaps call 911 for some assistance or at least try to get someone flagged down on the highway. And what would you say the biggest mistake that younger drivers do during the winter is? Too fast for conditions. Too fast for conditions? Yeah. That's the, uh, in, my, in my mind, uh, insurance companies rate this very high on their list of reasons that accidents happen to young drivers, and I would have to agree with that. It's too fast for conditions. They, they just don't realize the impact of speed versus conditions, and they sometimes don't recognize the fact that it could be slippery. Uh, someone like myself or you that's been driving for a number of years, we pay attention to a lot of the signs, the temperature, uh, when you step out of your house, is it a little bit slippery when you're walking around? Well, it's guaranteed it'll be slippery when you're driving around. So a lot of the times the new drivers can't recognize these things because of experience. It's an experience related topic. Well, thank you for coming on today. Appreciate it. I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you and drive safe this winter. You too. The construction of the energy building in St. John is moving along towards the proposed completion date of October 31st. The rear parking lot construction is complete with the exception of the walkway from the welding shop to the main walkway into C building. This will be completed in the coming weeks. That's our show for today. To submit a story idea, email us at jschoolmbcc at gmail.com or to see more of our work, visit jschoolmbcc.ca. Thanks for watching.